This is where it all started for K&N in 1969 with a beautiful old machine like this, but things have gotten a little bit more advanced since then. We snuck in the back door, nobody's working yet, it's, uh, it's actually lunch break, and this is the CNC area where you can see this mold where they actually cut it out on the CNC machine and then you can make the finished filter from this mold. This obviously has some excess that needs to be trimmed off, but this would pop out of the mold. You can see the shape would kind of, there she goes. Before they get to this stage, they sometimes will rapid prototype the mold. And that drawing can then be plugged into the CNC machine to make this aluminum version, the final version, which they can crank out a ton of filters from. This obviously wouldn't be durable enough for that. So let's uh, have a peek at some of the machines and show you how these are made. Now that we've shown you those molds, we're over in the area where they make the actual filters. This is your typical like pleated filter media here. You're used to seeing in like a panel filter or something like that. If you walk back here with me, you can see that it's actually just made of four layers of cotton. It's like cotton gauze, almost like you'd see at like the doctor's office. And then it's got a layer of this aluminum mesh on either side, which gives it the structure so you can pleat it. It's really that simple. It just rolls through that machine that pleats it with like a, a tooth pattern that kind of gives it that pleat action. Comes out the other end, it's ready to be trimmed and put into an actual filter mold. I should have mentioned that those machines were actually invented in-house here. I think the first one was built in around 1972. They called her Plenky. They've automated them a bit since then. Here's your, your pleated filtration. I can literally peel it open, peel back the aluminum a bit here. You can see it's just four layers of that cotton gauze. Surprisingly simple really, but obviously proven very effective over the years. So these are rolls of that pleated filter material we just showed you. And they come over here where they're actually cut to length. They literally count the number of pleats to get the right length for the application. And then they'll either be rolled into a conical shape for a cone filter, or they're left flat for a panel filter. So this is a pretty cool part of the process where a computer actually sorts the filters and the molds they need to do the injection molding process. So in this bin, you've got filter material. It'll send the mold down too and we'll move over to the table where they put the filter together. So here at the DJ table, it's actually quite warm, which is designed to uh, allow the urethane that's injected into the mold to harden once the, the filtration media gets plopped in there. So they literally have a machine over here that squirts the urethane in there. A worker will plop the filter in there. The table will rotate around, the heat giving the urethane enough curing time to harden up. You've got, you've got your filter joined to that urethane and you're, you end up with something like this. By the way, you can see on the table that there's uh, molds for AEM and Aerate as well as K&N and that's because they're all, all part of the, the same company. All your filtration comes from here, folks. There's the molds we showed you off the top, and the panel filter material is obviously fed in there very carefully so that each pleat goes down into its groove. From there, it, it rotates on this spinning machine into the injection molded area. That, that urethane material is actually mixed in the nozzle so that the reaction happens in there. It then cures as it rotates around. Comes out looking like this. Little excess on there to be trimmed off. Trimmed off like a boss by one of the workers here, you're left with this finished filter. The next step in the process is the filters come over to this oiling station. As you can see, it sprays oil on the filter in a, in a defined quantity. It looks like it hasn't coated the whole filter, but if you imagine uh, maybe a glob of butter on your shirt, it'll spread out over time, and it's the same with the oil. It'll actually fill in all that media in about a 20 minute period. So once it's sprayed, it gets packaged up, moves on down the computerized line. So we're at the last part of the line here. These filters are ready to go out, so they're being boxed up. You've got your stickers going in there. Then they'll be shipped out either direct to the customer or to a wholesale distributor, your AutoZones, your Turn 14s, you name it. They'll go out there to a happy customer, making some horsepower. We are here in K&N's ISO 5011 lab where they do science, testing all of their filters. 
You've got some of their other brands up here, Airaid, AEM, Spectre. Down below, you've got some of Canon's panel filters that are gonna be tested in OEM air boxes. That all happens back here, but we'll have to show you what some of the filters look like after they come out of the test. They are absolutely filthy. They even go so far as to use their own filters on the air system for the test bench here. Here's their filtration test bench. You take a Canon panel filter like this, put it in the stock air box, feed some dirt in through this nozzle, air is being pulled through the system, and any dirt that makes it through the filter will be trapped in a larger filter down here. They can then measure the amount in here versus what's trapped in the filter, and that'll tell them how efficient the filter is. If the results aren't positive, they can go back and redesign the filter by adding more you know, pleats to the system or changing the height or even maybe the number of cotton uh, layers inside of it. I should also mention that the oil on the filter is a tacking agent, and that's actually been proven here to really add to the filtration efficiency. So that's their, their science happening in here. And uh, once they're happy with that product, I guess it's ready to go back out into production. We're pretty accustomed to your aluminum tube intake but Canon also does this mold style intake where they literally take a powdered form of the plastic and pour it into a mold. That mold's heat, heated up and rotates so that the plastic liquefies and goes to the outside of the inner shape of that mold. It's then put into a cooling process where it still rotates and the plastic solidifies into this tubular form. You can then cut the ends off and you got yourself a nice intake tube. I should mention that one of the cool parts of this process is that these fittings are actually designed into the mold. So this is a, a mass sensor, for example. So you literally put the fitting in the mold and then when the plastic's injected inside, you end up with the fitting being completely molded in. Here you've got your completed air intake tube. It goes through a, uh, a cleanup process where any high points are shaved down. It's then polished. It's ready to be packaged up with a filter and your clamps and your couplers and all that good stuff for a complete air intake system. So that's a wrap of our tour of k &N. but before we leave, I wanted to give you a quick look at their Composites Lab. They make everything from these giant race uh, intakes for drag cars to consumer products like this lid for a Mustang intake, this one's for a Corvette intake. We've even got a giant autoclave in the back. I'm gonna make myself a carbon fiber copy of myself in there. Give it to my wife as a gift.